Ave Legion and welcome to my channel. My name is Ludi and today we're going to do our E4 1.30 starting moves guide for Lubeck. In this guide will be going over the diplomacy and rivals, missions, trade and economy, early wars as well as your later expansion and ideas that you should go for. Before we start the video don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe as well as leave the bell button on to get notified whenever I release a new guide. Whenever this video reaches a thousand likes I am also going to do a giveaway for a E4 DLC. I will ask a question at a random point in the video and we'll select the winner from amongst the answers in the comment section during a live stream. So watch the video until the end to hear out the question. Regardless of whoever rivals you, you need to rival the following three nations at the very start. First off, we're going to be rivaling Mecklenburg, even if they didn't rival you. The second two rival is going to be the small nation of saxe lauenburg And the third one is going to be East Frisia. Most of the times you're going to be rivaled by the same three nations, which is namely East Frisia, saxe lauenburg and Lüneburg. Sometimes even Mecklenburg does rival you, however, so keep that in mind. As you can tell, not many nations want to ally you from the beginning. Beginning, and we'd really like to get an alliance with the Emperor Austria himself so that we don't need to be worrying about the Emperor asking us for unlawful territory. But by the time you improve relations with Austria, they're going to have too many diplomatic relations slots filled up, so it's going to be quite hard getting that alliance. Instead, what you should definitely do is first improve relations with the Danes, actually, as one of our first missions, namely End the Sound Toll, requires that we either have 150 relations towards us from Denmark or that we control Lund and Ceyland. The problem with this is that they are both 20 development provinces and Denmark is quite strong at the very start. So it's quite easy just getting this mission enacted by getting the relations with them. So we're going to improve relations with the Danes but we're not going to get an alliance with them. After we get the mission established we're going to start improving relations with the Swedes and support their independence whenever they're ready for that. The nations that we do want to get an alliance with are going to be England as well as Brandenburg and if we can ally the Austrians but most of the times that is not available. Your main defensive force is going to come from the trade league that you are part of and you are the leader of. You can invite one more member from the start into your trade league namely Dietmarschen. By improving relations a little bit with a few of the other miners around you can get more nations such as Ansbach, Anhalt, Nassau, Trent, Brigands, Aachen and so on in your trade league. Do remember that you can only invite one province minor nations if they have two provinces like Magdeburg you cannot invite them. Having the trade league occupies one of your diplomatic slots but you still have three diplo slots to get some proper allies. If you're lucky enough and you manage to get a diplomatic reputation advisor then you should have a lot more alliance offers including the nation of Brandenburg but if you don't have a diplo advisor you will have to improve relations with Brandenburg. So for your first three allies go for Brandenburg, Hamburg which you should be able to get from the start and Dithmarschen. We will be dropping these allies for the bigger boys such as England, Sweden, Sweden and so on later on down the line once we have the relations with those nations. If you own the Emperor DLC that you're going to get access to the Lubeckian missions. If you don't have the Emperor DLC you will only get the generic missions with the end of the Sound Toll mission that is available for non-Emperor DLC owners. The Lubeck mission tree is divided in two parts. One part basically focuses on the development of your nation whilst the other part focuses on your trade node and the expansion of your trade node and trade influence. As such you have some really amazing modifiers that are going to actually last until the end of the game such as the shipwrights and sailors of Lubeck that increase your sailors by 500 and local shipbuilding time minus 10%. The Lubeck Krantor which gives again until the end of the game plus 10 trade efficiency, global trade power plus 5% and diplotech cost minus 1% as well as the queen of the Hanseatic League which again gives you until the end of the game minus 10 advisor cost and a diplo rep plus 1. A bit down the line after you've managed to do some of these missions and you've united the league by having six merchants finishing off the other missions down this line and being a great power you're gonna have Riga, Bremen, Hamburg, Oldenburg, Dithmarschen as well as any other member that is within your trade league as a vassal and you're gonna get diplomatic relations plus one until the end of the game as well as have a country name change to the Hanseatic League basically you will still be Lubeck but the name 
game is going to change to the Hanseatic League. So it is not a tag switch. Your first three easy missions to do include End of Soundtoll that I've talked about before, where you just need to either get 150 relations with Denmark or own the provinces of Seeland and Lund, which is going to give you a great buff until the end of the game of plus 15 local trade power and local trade power plus 25% for the province of Lubeck. Defend the city is an easy mission to get where you need to have 12,000 units in your army and have 100% force limit for your army which is going to get you a permanent claim on the entire Lubech area which means all of Mecklenburg as well as the province of Prignitz since by Lubech area I mean the Mecklenburg state the third easy mission that you have at the beginning is the merchant navy which clears up the way for the other really great missions to follow where you just need to have 20 light ships and this is easy to do after your initial conquest of Mecklenburg and a few other surrounding provinces another mission that you can have from the very beginning is ties with England where you either need to have 125 relations with the English and have an alliance with them or you need to have 25% of the English trade channel here and that's going to give you permanent claims on London, Lothian and Ayrshire which eventually is going to give you a subjugation CB on Scotland. At the same time if you follow the end of Soundtoll mission tree then you're going to get more permanent claims on Schleswig Holstein, North Jutland area as well as the Norwegian parts and after you've subjugated Norway you get a permanent claim on the North Atlantic Islands area which is basically the Iceland parts. Securing both of Norway, the north part of the Atlantic as well as Scotland gives you for 20 years trade steering and an explorer which eventually can get you a level 1 center of trade in the province of Berthuk in Newfoundland and as your last mission a new Lubech which gives you some bonuses for your colonies and renames the province of Manhattan to New Lubeck. Following the defend the city line which gives you the permanent claim on the Mecklenburg state can get you more claims on Gotland as well as Novgorod and Danzig. Do take notice this is only the province of Novgorod not the whole country. After you do own Novgorod you get five mercantilism and having seven members in the trade league as well as 70% of the Lubeck trade node gives you global trade power and diplomatic tech cost for 30 years. One of the best things about starting off as Lubeck is that you have a randomly generated leader. So I got a 024 here but in your situation if you want to restart the game a few times you can get a 666 or something really good as your initial leader. That being said when it comes to your advisors as I previously mentioned you should get a diplomatic advisor but if you cannot find one a trade efficiency one is really great also. I also don't recommend going for any military or admin advisor at the start as your economy is not that amazing but in a few years you should start getting those two since it is going to catch up. Start by recruiting three extra infantry divisions and after you finish recruiting the three extra that puts you one over your force limit we're also going to get a few loans and recruit a free company so that we have 12,000 units as such we can get the Mecklenburg mission that I was talking about. Don't forget to use the five light ships that you start off with to protect the trade in the Lubeck trade area as such increasing your trade power here also. One more thing to do is set the protect trade edict for your city so that you increase the amount of trade power that you have in Lubeck. On the 11th of December declare war on your first rival Saxe Lauenburg. It should be a fairly easy war. A lot of the times they either ally Dittmarschen or East Frisia. Sometimes they don't ally anyone. The worst case scenario would be them allying Denmark in which case do not attack them and attack East Frisia or get your humiliation age bonus from Mecklenburg. So because they're allied to Dittmarschen and because Dittmarschen's in a trade league with me as well as their leader is cruel they are not joining. But even if they do join do not despair you should have enough troops to take both of them out quite easily. In the peace deal with Saxe Lauenburg what you want to go for is humiliation, transfer trade power, war reparations as well as as much money as you can get from them. Peace them out and afterwards you should have by now 12,000 units with the mercenaries that you hired so you can get the claims on Mecklenburg. Make sure before that that you get your alliance with Brandenburg otherwise it's going to be a bit tougher since you get a claim on Prignitz also and that's going to lower your relations with them. Once you have the CB on Mecklenburg be careful a lot of the times they ally either Lithuania, Bohemia or some bigger nations. If you're lucky and they allied Lithuania that shouldn't be an issue as Lithuania most of the cases falls in the PU under Poland and the Teutonic Knights is not a big deal especially since you can probably rely on Brandenburg to attack the Teutonic Knights if they haven't gotten the provinces yet. If by any chance it's impossible going for Mecklenburg you should also go for a Volgast. So make sure that you start getting some claims on Volgast once you have a free diplomat. As expected the Lithuanians have fallen in a PU under 
under Poland and you need to act quick because a lot of the times when this happens Mecklenburg allies Poland so go ahead and attack the Mecklenburgi and call in your ally Brandenburg promise them some lands do not co-belligerate the Teutons as they most of the times have allied the Livonians if they didn't ally anyone you can co-belligerate them make sure that you stick with the Brandenburgian troops and that you fight together otherwise you're gonna lose this war if you stay separated once you have 150 relations with the Danes you should get the awesome modifier for your country so you can stop improving relations with them and you can start improving relations with the Swedes be careful Brandenburg might peace out without finishing the war together with you if that is the case it really depends on what stage you're in if the Teutons are stronger than you then you should probably peace out with as much as you can get from them but if you feel like you can take them on then you can continue the war until you get more war score having 30% of the a Baltic trade node gives you another mission that also gets permanent claims on Schleswig Holstein as well as the North Jutland area which means that you basically have claims on pretty much all of mainland Denmark making Lubeck the strongest trade node also gives you a boost of 15% trade efficiency and 30 prestige you can easily get this if you are winning the war against the Teutons and have taken these major cities here an optimal peace deal from the Teutons would be taking the city of Danzig as well as money and a trade power taking Danzig however is a massive deal because it is also one of your missions that requires that you take Danzig and if you don't take it at the start then the Poles will and you're gonna have to fight a much bigger nation in order to get this province here also take note that if you go into a very long and protracted war against the Teutons it is gonna cost you a lot of war exhaustion so you will have to use most of your diplo points to keep this down make sure that you core Danzig and when it comes to Mecklenburg you can either take provinces directly which means you're gonna have to deal with the Emperor asking you for unlawful territory so you probably will just have to start another war before you peace out Mecklenburg so that you don't need to worry about the Emperor or you can simply just vassalize the whole nation which is gonna cost you less aggressive expansion also I recommend that you cancel some of the rivals that Mecklenburg have to get some extra prestige and you peace them out right about this time you can also disband your free company as you have way too many troops and you are over your force limit so you don't need that many right now and I recommend that you build a few more light ships you should be able to get the mission Vismar and Rostock which is the two provinces that we've gotten that belong to our Mecklenburgi vassal use the money you got from the uh, Teutons to pay off your loans and get some new rivals now that we are slightly bigger we can get some other nations as our rivals wait for a few years to pass so that your aggressive expansion goes down in the meanwhile increase your trade power and influence in the Lubeck trade node it should be quite easy for Lubeck to increase their trade presence here especially after you've unlocked marketplaces and you've started building them pretty much everywhere around as well as remember to use your light ships and to continue to build light ships that you will be using to improve your trade influence in the Lubeck trade node as well as the adjacent trade nodes namely the Baltic Novgorodi trade nodes once you have your aggressive expansion a bit lower you should start your war against Volgast go ahead and make Strassund as your main target and you can even call in Brandenburg if you promise them some land and you can even give them some lands although it is not necessary make sure to position your troops by the border with Volgast so that you are the first one to get to these provinces before Brandenburg otherwise they might go for them start the war go for your war target peace out everybody except for the war leader and uh, go ahead and get the trade power that you can get as well as reparations and gold from these nations if you want to go for 100% you can get a bit of extra prestige as well from making them cancel alliances or rivals for example making Lunaburg cancel Hamburg as their rival gives me a good amount of prestige which is gonna help me out with the aggressive expansion in a perfect world you'd be annexing all of Volgast but that would be way too much aggressive expansion and you'd be in for a world of hurt after the coalition triggers so what we're actually gonna do is we're only gonna be taking the three provinces of Stralsund of Volgast as well as Rügen and if you need to you can just wait for one two three or how many years you need to wait in order to make sure that no big nations join into a coalition against you such as Bohemia Poland and so on remember that just a couple of nations joining into a coalition is not gonna trigger any coalition war so you're safe from that make sure that you take trade power as well from whatever is left of all guys so you ensure you got all of the trade power from them core up all the new provinces that you have and if you don't want the Emperor to ask you for unlawful territory you have two options either ally the Emperor or you can start another war as they cannot ask you for unlawful territory if you are in a war Poland here bit a little bit more than they could chew and they have a coalition triggered against them so I think that is a great idea to 
to start a war against them. Even though they may have quite a few troops, we have more and I'm fairly confident that Bohemia, as well as my human brain, can win this war. Coalition wars are a great way of uh, getting some free stuff such as uh, cash, trade power and making sure that people you don't want allied to Poland cancel their alliance to Poland or whichever other nation you're interested in. My case here, that was Stettin and I managed to get quite a few things from them, which makes them an easy target for my future wars. It is not guaranteed that Poland is going to be in this situation. In fact, it probably will not be in this situation. But what I'm trying to illustrate from this war is that whilst you're waiting for your aggressive expansion to go down within the HRE, you can always have wars in the eastern part of Europe, especially in the Livonian areas, Teutonic areas, and even the Polish areas if you're lucky enough, so that you can grab as much trade power as you possibly can since that is your end goal here as a trade nation. Another great thing about being the leader of a coalition against a nation is that they cannot peace out any of your allies but you can peace out their allies one by one thus reducing their strength to basically nothing. Also if you're piecing out a nation that is quite far and they don't have any trade power around you or in trade nodes that you're interested in it is better to go for a steer trade rather than trade power. Also take note that in coalition wars you cannot really take directly provinces unless you had a core on them before. You can return provinces that you want to return to whomever you want to return. So for example, you could return these back to the Teutonic Order or you could just take all the money that you can get, trade power and war reparations and get out of there so that we can focus on other wars. So the question for the giveaway is if you can make a creature for mixing two different species of animals, what would you make and why? The most interesting or entertaining answer is going to be the winner. So don't don't forget to leave your answer in the comment section below this video. After consolidating your position in the northern part of Europe, namely in the Lubeck trade area as well as the uh, Baltic trade area, you should focus on developing your nations, especially by increasing the centers of trade to level 3 centers of trade whenever you get the cash for that. Do remember that you need to have the uh, Cradle of Civilization DLC for this to be an option, otherwise if you don't have the Cradle of Civilization, simply continue to build the proper buildings namely marketplaces, trade depots, stock exchanges, as well as set the protect trade edict in all of your provinces to boost the amount of trade that you have and use the merchants that you have to transfer trade from the adjacent trade areas, namely Baltic Sea, Rhineland, Saxony, Krakow, and Novgorod, and later on also from the North Sea once you have enough merchants. Aside from increasing the amount of nations in the trade league, your own expansion should include pretty much all of Pomerania and the Teutonic Knights. As well as the Livonian order areas and Denmark proper once you get the uh, Swedes to rebel against them. Take note of the provinces that have the highest amount of trade value, namely the ones that have the centers of trade, and make sure that you own most of these provinces by the end of the 1400s, or at least that you have the nations that own those provinces in your trade league. Mercantilism is quite important for Lubeck, and because we don't have any estates to give the monopolies to, what we can do is use our papal influence to get some free mercantilism whenever we get 50 papal influence as well as get it from our missions and from promoting mercantilism the good old-fashioned way whenever we have extra points lying around. When deciding what idea set to go for first it really depends on whether you have admin, diplo or military points lying around. In my case I had extra military points so I went for plutocratic ideas. Plutocratic offers a lot of great ideas including morale of armies plus 10, one extra merchant, goods produced plus 10%, caravan power and man power recovery speed. The best part about Plutocratic is that it mixes amazingly in with trade ideas giving one more merchant and regiment costs minus 10% as well as economic ideas giving a plus 10 national tax and yearly Republican tradition. Ideally if you have a lot of extra Diplo points I would go for trade ideas first but considering the situation you have to adapt. As such I'd go for trade ideas as a second idea set which as I said mixes great with Plutocratic then go for economic ideas as a third idea and quantity ideas as a fourth one. Getting all four of these means that you can get insanely good policies such as goods produced plus 20%, trade efficiency and production efficiency plus 10% and so on. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe as well as leave the bell button on to get notified whenever I release new videos. I also want to give a very big thank you to all of my patrons and channel members. Thank you so much guys for all your support. If anybody else wants to become a channel member or a patron then you can find the links in the description. Until the next one, have a great day everybody.